right, everybody. Welcome once again to the Top 5 Podcast. I'm your host, Chris McPeak, and I am uh, joined once again, as always, by Annie Pruitt in Kansas. I'm in LA, and yeah, we love recording the show together. Hi, Annie. Hey, what's up? Well, it's, you know, podcast recording day. We fell a little bit behind. We were doing really good. Had like a five five episode stint there of, you know, week to week to week, and then classes yeah. started, and, you know, it just gets nuts. But uh, yeah, so it's September and still really hot here for the most part, and school started. So yeah, life as usual, I reckon. What about you? What's going on with you? So let's see. I think I'm going to do podcast with you today. And then after that, I'm going to get on my couch and catch up on some on some show watching because I've been a little hectic, but been having really great weeks at work because I love teaching and I've got amazing students. So yeah, life is really good. I'm at that like, I love my job from August to November because I, I get to teach and I get to be in the classroom. And then from like November to to April, I, like I pout because I I don't get to teach. Oh, yeah. Don't worry about that. That's okay. Okay. So what is the topic of today? So today is in the country series and we're going to do our top five working class like you working class hero or just working class country songs, the the country songs that kind of remind you of what, you know, the nine to five jobs and, and the, you know, working hard and struggling to make ends meet. And yeah. And all of that stuff for the, for our country music series. And I, I want to say, I'm thinking this is the last, this is the final country music series tune, I think. For now. Um, but you never know, because we come up with fun new stuff all the time. We sure do. Um, yeah. All right. Well, why don't you go first for this show? Okay. So I I tried really hard to to pick songs that, that would not have overlap. Okay. But this one could most is probably gonna end up on your list. But it's kind of it's kind of obvious, but I love it. <laughs> and that's uh shift work, Kenny yeah. Chet and and George Strait. And what's what's funny is when they when they filmed the music video, George Strait does not did not want to be in the music video. So it's actually just Kenny singing singing the song. But that's not a bad thing. I don't mind looking at just Kenny. Oh, no, I don't mind either. Yeah. But it's a great song, you know, working seven to three, three to eleven, eleven to seven. Eleven to seven. It, it's it's on it's on the road trip playlist for me and, and my husband. It's one of our songs that we love dancing to and singing to. It's just fun. And it it yeah, everybody in their lifetime at some point had a shift work, had a shift job. And you know you're watching that clock and you're just waiting, you're counting it down. And you know, when when the time is up, you you punch out and, and you need to go, you know, it's, you're you're working to live, not living to living for the job. So great. Yeah. Yep. Oh, it, yeah. We all had the shift work job. Yeah. And so since I did my own shift work job, I have since learned that shift work is now in, it's like considered a type two carcinogen in the same category with like red meat and <laughs> some other weird chemical. Where did I hear that? I heard that on the, on, in the Sean, Sean Stevenson's book about sleep. Charles did a, Charles has done a, a crap ton of shift work over the years and yeah it it wears you down for sure it certainly does my number five okay so it's not an obvious working class hero song but i i love the message behind it and so i'm going with mr mom by lone star which kind of you know flirts with the, the movie that michael keaton and terry garber in back in the 80s but i love the idea that taking this to the example of the dad being at home having to take care of the kids and that whole the role role reversal kind of thing and the chorus is hilarious i'm trying to remember all the full lyrics of it maytag di pampers melt in a maytag dryer and the crayons go up one shelf higher yeah it's only Monday, Mr. Mom. So it's funny. It's it's witty. It's cute. And it just, you know, yeah, the the people that stay at home with the kids, that's still a thing. And it's it's so endearing and sweet the way the song comes to life with the whole thing. So that's my number five. Mr. Mom by Lone Star. Okay. So 
Okay. <laughs> my, <laughs> oh, I just messed up my spreadsheet. I'm sorry. My number four, I'm going to go with Honey, I'm Home by Shania Twain. Are you, are you, are you raising your hands for a reason there? No. <laughs> Talk about Mr. Mom, you know, the guys at home. Well, this one is, you know, it's a woman that's going out to work. She's had a hard day. And uh, it's, it's on my, it's got a great beat to run to. And it's, it's one, it's one of my running play. It's on my running playlist songs, but it's, it's nice because again, it's, it's the role reversals. Like she's the one that's been out working hard all day and she's tired and she wants a foot massage and she doesn't want to, you know, come home and, you know, she had a bad hair day or whatever. And so I don't have a lot more else to say about it other than I really love Shania Twain. It's like those first two albums she had, or I, I love them. Yeah. Could I put one of those on my, on a different playlist because I listen to it so much. Just okay. not. Oh well, yeah. I mean, that's another yeah. one. It's a great I one. Not, I don't know that I can sing every song in, in sequence, but it's, it is a favorite for me. Yeah. Too. Well, I'll just say <laughs> that honey, I'm home is on my list as well. And okay. I go that so I'll I'll put it at number three since we're we're here and talking about that. Yeah, I well I love the message. I love the whole like, or isn't it old one and rub my feet and give me something to eat and yes <laughs> those things. Yeah, sh I don't know. Shania is kind of that that big breakthrough. Like she's one of the people I think that started to make country music is as big and, and popular and crossover, like way, way before Taylor Swift became a thing. Like she, yep. and, and she was very non-traditional country because she didn't wear, you know, she wore boots, but they weren't cowboy boots. They were, you know, high heeled fun leather boots and a lot of animal prints and a lot yeah, of time. type of non-country clothing that suddenly this is the thing. So yeah. Yeah. It was you too go around with your bad self, Shania. How can she be too sexy? Are you are you kidding me? There's no way. Yeah. Can't be done. All right. So that's your number four then. That's gonna be my number four. Yes. Okay. So my number three is not necessarily a well, it's 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 kind of like you. It's it's a little it's a little different, but hang on, I just had the page I wanted. So my number three is gonna be American Honky Tonk Bar Association by garth brooks okay and so just because you're you're very the very first two two lines of the song is if your paycheck depends on the weather and the clock if your conversation calls for a little more than a coffee pot so there you go it's working class people that at the end of the day they need to get out to a bar hit a yeah. happy hour and meet other you know get around with all the other people that are having the same awful awful day that they did or that he or you know that you had and and that and you belong to that club you're in that club of the people that we had a hard day and damn it all i'm looking forward to is my honky tonk bar so i can sit down and drink a beer with my buddies and talk about my my asshole boss or you know the the, the bitch that cut me off on the you know right. in the right on the way or, yeah so i love garth brooks and it's like it was it was funny when you when you google like Working class country songs, you get a lot of the old school stuff, but I wanted to go more with like artists that I love, yeah. songs that I love, and this is definitely one of them. I I, I think I've always kind of had a, a little bit of a crush kind of on, on Garth Brooks. I am ashamed that I've yet to see him live. Oh. I've got that man in concert because to this day, he's still like one of the most amazing performers live. So it's on my list to see yeah. him. Yeah, a lot of people have, I've heard from a lot of folks that, the the Garth Book Brooks concert experience is one of a kind. So yeah. I'm not the hugest fan, but I would see that show because I've heard he's just an exceptional performer. Yep. Okay, back to me. Back to you. Okay, so my number th my number three is International Harvester by Craig Morgan, and uh I kind of, I'm like, I gotta think about the farmers, you know, country music, and and uh, this song I think just has. The like lyrics are cute and it's got a good a good beat with it. He's a son of a third generation farmer and he's been married ten years to the farmer's daughter and he's a uh, God fearing, hard working com combine driver hogging up the road with his p -p 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 plower. <laughs> I'm <was> all <laughs> excited to hear that part of the song. Chug a lug, chug a lug, a lug, and five miles an hour. But yeah, so this song's fun and totally echoing the the what the the role that the farmers play in talk about working class heroes. Oh my God. You know, they're up at the 
crack of dawn even before and and at bed super late doing the harvest and planting the crops and this that and the other thing and and that's that song just i don't know it makes me appreciate what those what those folks have to do and and it's not so much like you know individual personal farms anymore because everything's become so government and corporate and all this crap but so yeah i don't know this song just makes me happy and it's like cheers to you to the farmers because y'all work harder than probably anybody anymore or before you know what i'm saying um yeah, so yeah that's that story <laughs> okay my number two big surprise no surprise, actually. And I kind of, I, I went back and forth on this one. It's not a traditional country song, uh -huh. but I, I like it. And it, you know, this, this particular artist could easily perform in a country bar. And that is all I want to do. Cheryl Crow. Not a country song, but, you know, it kind of fits the mold because, you I know. I love it thing all i want to do is have some fun i can't like right now off the top of my head I'd, like i'm drawing a blank with the lyrics but i just think to myself is you know you've worked all week you've had a tough time by the weekend all i want to do is have some fun so i was thinking about uh, this list was hard for me because i didn't want to go with the traditional you know conway twitty oh, or yeah so i went a little outside of the box but i do love cheryl crow and i think about like working a hard day that's kind of where my mind goes. Yeah. So, I love yeah. that song. And I remember that song being really popular when, when we were moving to Washington. And that album, Cheryl Crow's first album, T Tuesday Something, had Leaving Las Vegas on it. And, and that's all I want to do. The, the songs and the lyrics have a weird, a weird rhythm of style, the way that they're sang, that they're sang, sung. I like a good beer buzz early in the morning. And Billy likes to rip the labels from his bottles of Bud. And that's, I mean, it's all kind of crunched together, but then later there's another, another kind of, I don't know, crunchy group, group of lyrics that come together and you're kind of like, her songs are hard to sing. At yeah. least from this album they are. I've tried to do this one and Leaving Las Vegas at karaoke and oh. uh, she kind of got, she her her lyrics rolled together better <laughs> a few albums later, but not, not this record. Yeah, a little woohoo. Cool. Yeah. I love, I, I do like Cheryl Crow. I've seen her in concert, I want to say three, three times. Oh, um, wow. And the best one by far was uh, seeing her at the Ryman Auditorium. She had a, I mean, not a full orchestra, but she had a, a small orchestra up on the stage with her and she, her and, and Sarah McLaughlin are two artists that sound better live than they do recorded. And I, I will stand by that until the day I die. Really powerful, strong voices that don't need altering at all. Yeah. Um, you know, as opposed to, say, Axl Rose or Janie Lane. Like, yeah. No, no insulting, of course, but they know they really can't sing. My, so me, number two, right? Yes. You're, right. wait. Yes, you're number two. Okay. I'm going with Something More by Sugarland from their first album, Speed of Life. And this whole... Monday, hard to wake up, fill my coffee cup, I'm out the door. And the whole thing is just like, yeah, I, I'm working this job and I'm, you know, it's paying the bills, but there's got to be something more. And then finally, she decides that I'm fucking out of here. I gave my two weeks and I'm out the door. And then she comes home at 730 and her house is dirty, but it can wait. So she's going to have her downtime and her wine. And and I always change the lyrics in my mind to drink some red wine and not <laughs> celebrate. But what rhymes with celebrate, I'll just leave it at that. So anyway, it, it's it's fun. I, I love Sugarland. I love everything, off, every song off this record. But this song just makes me think like, yeah, sometimes we know we are, we're working jobs that they pay the bills, but they're not, you know, they don't feed our soul. And, and I think, you know, as hard as we do work in this lifetime, we should choose a vocation that, that feeds our soul and, and gives us a sense of purpose. So when she says there's gotta be something more, gotta be more than this, then yes. And we should all feel like we can pursue that regardless. Yeah. So. What was the name of the song? It's called something more. And it is the first track off the speed of light life light life song album the same album that has baby girl on it okay when sugarland uh, is still three people and not four people or so time for my honorable mention. honorable mention okay my honorable mention 
I hope this is not your number one or is going to be the duet of Working for a Living, Garth Brooks and Huey Lewis. It's the honorable mention because it didn't start out as a country song. It's a Huey Lewis and the new song, but then Garth and Huey did a duet of it. And, and it's amazing again. So you got, it's Garth. So, and it, and then it's Huey and it's a great song. It's, it's pretty obvious, but I love it. I, I love those two. I love, I wish they would do more collaboration because they, they just, they, they sound really good together, but yeah, they, that's, that's my, a great, that's a great song that translates to country very easily. You know, with Huey, Lu Huey Lewis and the news being the sort of like horn, horn powered rock pop band blues powered band and a lot of harmonica because you know huey's all about the harmonica but this song translates really well to yeah. being country and i thought about this because that was an obvious song that came to mind for me is working for a living but i i didn't realize that there was a country version or that that i couldn't find a huey lewis and and garth brooks single on yeah. on, I, on apple music so i kind of left that one <laughs> that one flat but it is it is a really good song about work for sure yeah working for oh you already you already put that on there okay so my my number or my honorable mention is for sure like old school country and only because it is probably the pen, the pen ultimate like i hate my job and and that's the johnny paycheck take this job and shove it from like 1978 or something ridiculous like yeah. that and, and i can even roll over the lyrics in my head i can't get past the you know take this job and shove it i ain't working here no more and i don't need to sing anymore because that's like the spirit of the, the whole the whole song yeah. but that's yeah that is old school country that's super twangy twang twang country and and all of the things so yeah that just gets honorable mention but it's still yeah. it's a good giggle all right, so I have this weird feeling that we're going to have the same number one. I kind of am going in that direction too, but let's let's see what happens. Wait, but so shift work did not make your list then because you no. smiled. Okay, yeah. So okay, I'm just going to go with it. It's, it's it's the most obvious, but I love it, and I love this singer, Nine to Five, Dolly Parton. I love her. Was that your number one? Nope, it wasn't. Okay. Oh, good. Okay. Yay. 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 Here's the, and the, the background. The backstory to this is, you know, she's doing the movie before she writes the song. So, the, you know, the, the movie needs a song, you know, the hook, the, you know, the fun thing. And so she's, she's coming up with the, the song and she's, she's singing it for, for Jane Fonda and Lily Tomlin. And she's clicking her fingernails on the table as she starts singing it. And they just tell her, stop, that's it. That's what we want. And that's the kind of, the, the the tick 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 in the in the song that's because they love the way her fingernails were tapping on the table son but it's it's pretty much if you've never seen the movie it's amazing dolly parton is the um, she's one of america's sweethearts i adore her but yeah tumble out of bed stumble to the kitchen pour myself a cup of ambition yawn and stretch and try to come to life so yep. i will be, i won't even try to sing dolly but it's such a great it's such a great song and like even when I hear it on the radio, my kids start singing along or, you know, when we're in the car and it comes on the radio or if it comes on yeah. our plate, the kids know it. And it's, it's the quintessential working hard every day song. Yeah. There yeah. you go. Yeah. Number one. That is a great song. And I thought about that song. I thought that that song was going to be so obvious that one of us would cover it. So yeah. I thought okay. I'll go the yeah. other direction because this is the other, for me, this is, this is the obvious working class hero song. And I, so I went with 40 hour week by Alabama. Oh. Um, and yeah, I, th this song, this was like, I don't know, four albums in for Alabama. So we were already in Arkansas, but I think I might, it might've already been like halfway through high school before this one came out. But uh, yeah, th this is, this is kind of an uplifting, like we know that there are people that, that work hard jobs and we all put in our 40 hours. It kind of reminds me when I think of this song, I also think of there is no I in beer by Brad Paisley, although that's not really a working class hero song, but he does like salute, you know, all these different, different fields. 
And hang on, I'm going to pull the lyrics up for this because it kind of, hold on everybody. Okay, it's time a few of them are recognized. So now here we're going to salute all these amazing people that work super hard. So it's Detroit auto workers, Pittsburgh steel mill workers, and then we've got the Kansas wheat field farmer and the West Virginia coal miner. And I I thought they covered nurses in here too, but yeah, I so this this song just makes me happy because it's it's very complimentary of people that work really 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 hard. And th- and sometimes I think we don't even think about these these vocations anymore because so much of this stuff has become automated or farmed out or sent to China or Mexico whatever, but this was kind of I think what the idea of work was built on that we we find our place in the circle where we can contribute and and all of these fields like industrialization how all that kind of stuff started so and you know you can't you can't go wrong with alabama they're just they're they are classic country royalty so yeah that's my number one i love it thank you this up on list this is going to be an epic playlist for shizzle Definitely. And, and definitely one that, you know, you have to, you need to listen to it on your way home. Yes. Absolutely. Oh, that, yeah. that will be a great commuting song. Yes. A, a great commuting playlist. And that all of a sudden makes me think that we should do a commuters playlist, like a pump up to go to work. Top five. Show. Oh, oh yeah. Or what are like- your top five going to work songs? Yes. Set the tone for the day for you. Hmm. I love it. Okay, so that's going to come down the pike. Let's recap. I'll go first. Okay. Um, my honorable mention is Take This Job and Shove It. And then from five to one, Lone Star's Mr. Mom, Craig Morgan's International Harvester, Honey, I'm Home, Shania Twain, Something More, Sugarland, and 40 Hour Week by Alabama. Okay, I love it. I just lost, where did I put this? <laughs> Uh, okay, so my honorable mention, working for a living, Garth Brooks and Huey Lewis, uh, and then from five to one, shift work, Kenny Chesney and George Strait. Uh, number four, Honey, I'm Home, Shania Twain. Number three, American Honky Tonk Bar Association by Garth Brooks. Uh, number two, All I Want to Do, Cheryl Crow, because I really love that song. And then number one, nine to five, American nine Sweet. Five. Yeah, you had more ladies on your. I list. did. That's pretty cool. It's pretty cool. If work. Well, all right. Uh, so that gets us through another amazing week of top five podcast list song things. We have not done, we've done a crap ton of music shows lately. We need to take a, we need to take a look at our, our overall list and maybe yeah. a reboot. So this is the part where I say, if you have any ideas of a top five list that you want us to cover on this show, we would love to hear that. And you can send us an email at hello at the top five podcast.com. No idea will be displaced or ignored. And we'll definitely mention you on the air if we don't do your list, but we'll still probably do your list because, you know, this is a brain racking activity, people, you know, not everybody can do this. Annie and I can do it. But we we love your ideas, so send them over, right? Absolutely. Absolutely. Okay, thanks again for downloading the show. I do have to say this, that we really appreciate each and every one of you that download the show and listen every week. And we definitely want to hear from you. What what do you like? What do you not like? So again, the email is hello at the top by podcast.com. For Annie Pruitt, I'm Chris McPeak, and we will catch you on the flip side once again with another amazing, enticing, exciting, and inclusive episode of the Top 5 Podcast. We will see you then. Bye.